I want to open the show today with a warning for Lefty. There were two small flies annoying the heck out of me as I was sitting in the broadcast booth over the last 10 minutes doing final preparation for this show. They are both now gone, and I got each one of them with just one swipe. So I am, I am on my game today. Two flies, two swings, two dead flies. 807, Bill Colley with you. Our top story today, Monday, in fact, on, uh, on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Look, we've got a lot to talk about today. Guest heavy on this Monday. Randy Staple is joining us between 840 and 9 o'clock. And then Chris Anderson joining us at 920 this morning from the Herod Center uh, at the College of Southern Idaho talking a little science. Uh, he's got a lot to discuss today. In fact, I've got a couple of questions for him too, scientific questions. People uh, were mailing me things over the weekend and some fascinating stuff I'm looking about or looking at about the future and what it's going to mean for mankind. Uh, weapons that will be able to change and mutate living organisms on the planet, as well as Paul Allen, who owns the Seattle Seahawks, is also working on a project to enhance the human brain. I thought they'd already done that. They called it Russell Wilson, but apparently uh, that wasn't the case. That was a prototype or that they didn't decide to go with, and they're looking for something new at this point. Well, slow start, I guess you'd, you'd consider doing that. A couple of things we're going to talk about as well this morning, uh, if we get a chance. Uh, Randy Staple, as, as, as he pointed out in his, his weekly column, his sister is a teacher at the college in Oregon where there was a shooting over the weekend, or Friday, uh, heading into the weekend. And if we get a chance, I, I want to pick his brain about that a little bit too as well. Albeit we'll have some time, I hope, to talk about that and some of the developments that are coming out about that particular story. But in the meantime, a friend of mine managed to watch a program. Uh, I didn't get a chance to see it yesterday. Sinclair Broadcasting owns oh, close to 200 TV stations around the country. Sinclair has hired Cheryl Atkinson, formerly an anchor at CBS News. She wasn't the main anchor, of course. She was doing weekends and a lot of investigative reporting for uh, for CBS News. She now has her own Sunday show. It competes with a lot of the other talk shows that you have on Sunday mornings. But the usual talk show is to sit down and say, you know, I'm here with Senator Benson D. Uh, you know, Broadback, and we're having a conversation about S. Uh, 1917 and uh, the implications of that bill, and then they drone on for half an hour, and then they bring in a couple of talking heads, and the talking heads say, well, I think the senator, what he really meant was, even though you watched it and you could already form your own opinion on it, her show is much more of a magazine-style format, and it opened up first episode yesterday, and I have some clips here as well, first episode yesterday talking about refugee resettlement. And she actually went to a small town in Maine. Well, small town in Maine, it, Lewiston, Maine is actually, would be considered a big city in Maine. Maine has no cities so with a population of over 100,000. 100, uh, Portland might be the largest, and that might have 80,000. And the state capital might have half that many. So Lewiston, Lewiston is a city probably under 40,000 people. It has a lot of similarities to Twin Falls, Idaho. And they have been accepting refugees from East Africa and the Middle East there for many, many years. And I have a few clips from the program. And when you keep hearing this isn't going to cost you much, uh, and you've got to be nice and you've got to do this because, well, it's going to make Lefty feel better about him or herself. Take a listen to what's going on in Lewiston, Maine, where, and, and there's a, I'm not going to surprise you. Well, tell you what, I'm not going to spoil the surprise. She's talking about some actual figures, the number of people who are living there. We'll get to that in just a few moments. This is the debut show with Cheryl Atkinson, Sinclair Broadcast Group, and she's getting some public reaction in Lewiston, Maine. A new full measure Rasmussen Reports poll released today finds a majority of Americans think we should take fewer. 28% say 200,000 is too many. Another 28% say we should accept no refugees at all. 27% say they're okay with 200,000, and 10% say that's too few. When asked about the impact the refugees would have on America's security, 56% say the refugees would make America more dangerous, 7% say it would make the U.S. safer, 25% say it would have no impact, and 12% were unsure. Now, you've been hearing, oh, people in this community support this project. My guess is people in this community are really much more like people everywhere else around the country. And we're not nearly as liberal as some other parts of the country. You'd get a different poll result perhaps in San Francisco or some of its surrounding suburbs or in New York City or perhaps Boston, Massachusetts. 
But this is a national survey, and nearly two-thirds of the people surveyed are opposed, either in part or wholly opposed. Only a third, if you add up just a little over a third, are actually supportive of this program. So when you've got a two-to-one margin, that should likely be telling you a lot about the public mood about this situation. She went on to explain the mayor of Lewiston, Maine, the current mayor, he isn't happy. Lewiston is now caring for people from at least 30 different countries. We were told we had to take care of these people out of our pocket. No, no federal money, no state money. Just because they showed up here, we were responsible for them. Did that, did, did that get you, you know, just a, a little bit off guard? Because I've been told that we don't really have many expenses on the local level related to this that this is all being picked up by the federal government, which means you're still paying taxes to the federal government, and they spread these programs all over the country, but the idea is that, that you're not directly paying for it. You know, it's being laundered through the federal government's bureaucracy. But he's saying that's not the case. He's saying that his government has to pick up the load. In fact, I was just reading at Randy Staples' Idaho Weekly Briefing this morning comments about the, uh, the homeless in Boise where the city of Boise now has opened its, it, it's gotten into the landlord-tenant business. It's got 300 units for homeless people so they can move them in at taxpayer expense. So obviously it's the local communities who are picking up a lot of these costs with these people. We've been told otherwise, haven't we? Now, does this sound familiar? This is another clip from the show, the debut show, Cheryl Atkinson's new program, Fueling resentment was the fact that elderly and disabled Americans were on waiting lists for assistance while the Somalis swallowed up nearly a third of Lewiston's welfare budget. In 2002, then-Mayor Larry Raymond wrote a controversial open letter asking the Somalis to stop coming. Please pass the word. Our city is maxed out financially, physically, and emotionally. For that, he got accused of bigotry. McDonald, the current mayor, says the implication still sticks. Now, you get this. The old folks in the city are eating dog food to survive. The city can't give them the benefits because the city is giving them to all of the refugees who are being dumped there. Is that clear? And you're called a bigot if you object to that? We've got wounded warriors out there who are getting substandard care through the VA, and, we've, and, 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 and really, people not paying any attention to them. And in this community, Lewiston, Maine, They've got even more serious problems because it's affecting people who are old and they can't provide for them. How is this going to be beneficial for a community then like Twin Falls? And why is it called bigoted if you're more concerned about caring for old people who've been with you for generations or with your wounded warriors? Come on, Lefty. Why don't you try to explain that one to us? What is it you've got against them? It's 45. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story. On News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And the current mayor, his name again, McDonald, uh, he is an extremely annoyed individual. They're costing us a fortune because we, and they're costing the people of Lewiston, not the state of Maine, not the federal government, but the city of Lewiston is being, is being taxed for that. Today, there are about 5,000 refugees and asylum seekers in the Lewiston area. 10% of the population consuming 40% of the welfare. Actually, it's a little more than 10%. Lewiston has a population of about 36,000. So 5,000 is well over that. Did, but did you hear that? Small percentage, as is, is, is it looks, of the overall population, a little over 10, consuming 40% of the welfare. And we're told it's not going to happen here. No, no, no. The statistics compiled by the objectivity uh, a gang over at your local newspaper claim, no, not going to happen here. Nope, 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 nope. Far more Idahoans, they tell you, native-born Idahoans are getting public assistance. Why? Well, of course you can't find a job because these guys are coming and taking them all. This is coming from Daniel Pipes. He is the man who is behind an organization called Middle East Watch. Uh, he actually invited me. He used to vacation in a resort area where I was hosting a radio show and he invited me to, to become a member of his mailing list. He's one of the few people who's ever come to me and said, do this. Usually I just sign up, you know, on my own anonymously. 50 years of dangerous immigration legislation, he says, unlike other government decisions, say tax rates or defining the nature of marriage, those affecting immigration are both irreversible and profound. 
In that light, today marks a half century since the passage of one of the least heralded but most significant pieces of legislation in Amer American history, and that was, of course, uh, the redoing of our immigration laws way back in 1965. As for the numbers of immigrants, they totaled 5% of the population 50 years ago, 14% today, and are projected to make up 18% in another 50 years. And then he adds this. As multiculturalism takes hold, I wonder if classic American culture with its stress on individualism and freedom will survive. As communication and transportation costs shrivel, maintaining bonds to other countries gets easier, permitting newcomers to opt out of critical portions of American life. Mr. Pipes writes, I watch how the American power of acculturation weakens and a once unified country becomes increasingly riven. I worry that the success of the United States will bring in so many from the world at large that they eventually undermine that very success. Put differently, the first half century of Hart's cellar is just a warm-up for what's to come, and he's referring to that immigration law. The United States of 2065, he writes, will differ much more, I predict, from today's country than today's does from that of 1965, and not for the better. And not for the better. And then I came across this. Somebody sent it my way over the weekend. Uh, this comes from uh, Andrew Breit uh, Breitbart's publication. Of course, he's no longer with us, but Breitbart.com continues. Senate Immigration Subcommittee releases chart proving immigration will outpace American population growth 7 to 1 through 2065. What is the goal of all of this, you may be asking yourself, other than simply the destruction of our culture. The chart shows, the writer says, for every one net American born to today's population, births minus deaths, the federal government will add seven more people to the country through future immigration. Pew found that, and Pew is a research agency, Pew found that by more than a three-to-one margin, Americans wish to see immigration rates reduced. That's a higher number than what we were just hearing from Cheryl Atkinson. But, of course, they don't want it raised, and it's still going up and up and up and up. Unless such reductions are enacted, the foreign-born share of the U.S. population will soon eclipse the highest levels ever recorded in U.S. history and will keep climbing to new all-time records every decade of the 21st century. So, according to Pew, three to one, people are opposed to all of this taking place. Why is it that the people you elect, the servants, your servants, do not listen to you on this subject? Because the people who are peeling off big stacks of campaign cash, they want this cheap labor. Labor. They don't care if it destroys the country. They can always fly away if they need to. They're not really concerned. The lack of patriotism there is just astronomical in this day and age. Uh, it's, just, it's, just, it's, just, it's just out of this world. I'm telling you right now, the people who come to you this next time around in November and then the following primary season and then in the November the following year and they tell you, I'm for you. Here's a picture of Ronald Reagan. Yeah, I'm for, for him too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Vote for me. And I like mom and apple pie. Don't trust them. Do not trust these people. They are talking out of two sides of their mouths. 20 minutes after 8 o'clock. Your telephone call is coming up in just a couple of minutes. Bill Colley with you on News Radio 1310, KLIX. I have some, uh, some more shocking details of what all of this immigration means for the future of this country. And it's taking place not far away from here, uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. We'll get to that in just a moment. I do want to remind you, coming up on Wednesday morning, between 8.30 and 9 o'clock, Dr. Jonathan Tripp is going to be joining us in studio from Tripp Family Medicine right here in Twin Falls. When was the last time you had a chance to really ask a friend? And that's what he is. Ask a friend for medical advice. Get an opportunity to do that when he's here or one of his assistants. We do this every Wednesday between 8.30 and 9 o'clock right here on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Got a lot to discuss this week, but I do want to point out that his people are very involved and active in this community and especially in various community projects for the betterment of everyone's lives. He has also a member of his staff joining some folks uh, this week on the air with us during another segment, and we're going to be talking about Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I really do hope that you can tune in for that because we've all lost people to, uh, to that illness, and it's just devastating for people who get it. It's devastating for the families, too, around them as well. You can tune in each Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. for Better Health, brought to you by Tripp Family Medicine in Twin Falls, located directly across from the main post office on Fillmore Street because life's too short not to feel good. So you wonder what all of the impact is on our culture about people coming here from elsewhere. At some point, 
do we lose that culture? At some point, every lefty loves every culture in the world and says they're all equal and we shouldn't judge other cultures. It's like the old Star Trek Prime Directive. But lefty doesn't like his own culture. And for that self-loathing, he's trying to destroy it by bringing in people from all over the world. This comes from the Daily Caller, and this is what I'm hinting at. It's 824. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 45. Students at a Wyoming high school took matters into their own hands last week by festooning themselves in the colors of the American flag after the principal and an assistant principal canceled America Pride Day over concerns that some immigrant students could feel sad and left out. <laughs> What a wimpy country we live in any longer. It, it, it might hurt their feelings, and then they might go home and cry, and then they uh, and, and, and then they accuse us of being mean-spirited. So we're going to take down all of the American flags, and we're going to have all of the new students go out to the football field, and we'll have them urinate on it on the 50-yard line. Jackson Hole High School Principal Scott Crisp Blame the results of a student survey and his concerns that some students may feel excluded if they see an American flag for the administration's decision to cancel America Pride Day. They replaced it with a college preparation day. Oh, that's exciting. The community newspaper also notes that while Chris pointedly failed to identify the students who might feel left out upon seeing American flags, the surrounding Teton County School District is home to a substantial population of Latino students. The Jackson Hole High 2015-2016 School Profile webpage and other Teton District webpages offer the opportunity to translate text into a single alternative language. That would be Spanish. So who are they looking out for? Students protesting to replace America Day with College Day were ironically liable to make some students feel left out. Here's a quote from a student by the name of Harry Burt, and he was asking the local newspaper, What if you can't afford college? There's a lot of kids here that can't afford college. College is not an option for them. It's more discriminatory. That's what he said to the newspaper. So, so you have a you have a day, a, a college day, with the idea you're going to have that discussion, or you know, it, it, it was all part of homecoming week festivities, and each day had a different theme. So I guess you're supposed to walk in, and, and it's not about prepping for college. You're supposed to walk in a, w wearing some sort of college memorabilia. You know, you come in and you got a Mustang on your jacket, or you, you know, you you got a, a Colt on the jacket, or something like that that represents a a, a various college mascot somewhere. And, and this was to replace America Pride Day. Well, why wouldn't you want these newcomers coming to this country to have some sort of pride in the United States? We had a 24-year-old candidate for Twin Falls City Council in here on the uh, on the air with us last week, and she was saying. If these people are going to come here, then they're, they're going to have that pride. They, ha they should have that pride. And if they won't s pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, why would we want them? Why, because we're going to end up, what do we have, a population now? 335 million, I believe, is the total, the last estimate. So you've got this massive population in this country, and a lot of it doesn't believe in this country. Funny they came here to find opportunity, but they don't really believe in the country. That makes me scratch my head as well, wondering what system they think would be better. And if they came here for opportunity, how changing it could harm that opportunity. But, but it strikes me when I hear these stories, if these people can't accept that, we're going to have not one country, we're going to have 335 million countries with everyone doing as they please. We've already rewritten the, uh, the when these people are immigrants coming here and they take the, the oath of citizenship, we've already rewritten that so they don't have to pledge that they would fight in the U.S. military. <laughs> I'm, I'm, again, I, I'm perplexed here because, all right, if the guy's terribly nearsighted, obviously the military may not want him. But that's, that's a whole different matter, isn't it? I've got about a minute before the break. Seven three six zero three hundred. We have a caller with us. You're next on News Radio thirteen ten KLIX. Yeah, good morning, Bill. You know, th this is what we've been talking about. The, see, in Idaho, uh, we keep saying, you know, people in California move up here. They want to change Idaho into California. Okay, I'm not picking on Californians at all when I say that. But what I'm getting at is these people move here and want to change us. They're supposed to move here and want to change themselves. 
they want to become part of our group. They want to become part of the greatest country in the world. But we are being taken down. And the sad part is, Bill, is the politicians are letting them do it. We don't want to hurt their feelings, so we're going to change this. We don't want to hurt their feelings on something else, so we're going to change that. Well, we need to change politicians then. Oh, absolutely. Oh, Bill, and the other day you mentioned our glorious little jerk from Twin Falls, Simpson. People that ought to be calling his office. In fact, I can get his number real quick and give it to you. People call him. And that's what he did to us last week on this uh, the, the budget. See, that's what we've got. There, we vote him in. He knows exactly how Twin Falls and the surrounding area wants him to vote. And the guy will not do it. But guess hey. what? We keep voting him back in. Yeah, well, somebody somewhere feels that they're getting something out of that. I thank you much for the telephone call, as I was saying. I've heard that, I I mean, I don't have that experience with it, but the primary challengers that he has faced probably weren't the best candidates or they were terribly underfunded. And that's, hey, money's a key there. It's 8.30. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. Randy Staples will join us in about 10 minutes from Idaho Weekly Briefing. We carry a show between 4 and 7 o'clock on Monday through Friday and afternoons 4 to 7 o'clock. And then the best of on weekends, uh, Glenn Beck. And he was saying on his, his last program, his last live program, which we actually it's slightly delayed here because of the, the, the mountain time schedule, but Beck was talking a little bit about a situation that if you wonder why we can't really change government, and a lot of it does come down to the fact that the other guys are taking huge sacks of money from people who are trying to influence elections, and a lot of us just simply, we can't play that game. But Beck is trying to make a point, and he's, he's talking about the number of people who just simply don't want to get involved. He also was making a mention of a Boise pastor, Saeed Abedini, who's being held in a dungeon right now in Iran, and, and talking about why you, you have to stand up. You want to change the world? Do you know how? Do you realize that it's about 60% of Christians aren't even registered to vote? 60%? You've been standing around with your hands in the pockets doing what? You're losing your culture. There are more people that have been slaughtered for Christianity in the name of Christ in the last five years than the previous 2,000 years. This is the time of persecution. And we're sitting around with our hands in our pockets? Do you know about do you know about the pastor that is being held in uh, in Iran? Do you know why he's there? Why is he there? Because he wouldn't stop preaching about Christ. Do you know why they won't let him out? Because he's converting people in prisons. He's in the prison, and they keep telling him, "We're going to kill you. We're going to kill you." And he's like, "That's all right. I'm going to keep talking to this brother over here about Christ." They are so afraid of one man just saying the truth. They have to put him in prison. And what do we do? We as a Christian community have a collective yawn. Now, we are aware that we are, we are told that we should not put our faith in earthly princes, and they will always disappoint you. The problem is that they're disappointing us to the point now where it, it, it seems like there's, there's no other choice but to get involved and to change things. Beck suggests many also have the Bible's injunctions wrong. Oh, well, we're not visiting the people in the prisons and the sick. That's not what the scriptures are talking about. When the scriptures are talking about going worry about the people who are in prison, it's not the Pope going to the prison. It's pray for the people in prison like Saeed that are actually in prison, who are preaching it in prison. Glenn but where are our churches? Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? We can't even get our own congregations to get out the vote. Glenn Beck speaking on his program uh, Friday, eight thirty six. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio thirteen ten KLIX, News Radio thirteen ten dot com. Telephone number to reach the program seven three six zero three hundred. And you're up next. You're on the air. Well, this is what happens when people, good Christian people speak their mind, and then they're put in their place by useful idiots who seem to think that nothing can ever happen here. In the seventh grade in Bakersfield, California, a, a boy came home with a, a assignment 
and this is what it was. What are the five pillars of Islam? Name and describe. Scan the code to hear the call to prayer from the mosque. Obama said it was the most beautiful sound on earth. That's what he said. When you, are com when you combine uh, the Quran with Sunnah, you get the basis of Islamic law, which is Sharia law. What is this called and why is it important? Describe Islamic beliefs and practices. Now, this is what this boy said, brought home to, to, to you know, his mother, and she said, like hell, we're not doing this. And she said, what about teaching Christian things <laughs> in school? Can't do that. School? Yeah. And uh, you should have seen the, the, the repercussions that she took from those good people in Bakersfield, California, who obviously are lost. Well, you know what? The school systems, and it goes right up through the colleges, they're making an assumption that most American kids already have a grounding at home or in church about the Bible and, and, and Christian teaching. But that's not the case anymore, and it hasn't been for a few generations. It, it, and so they make that assumption, and they say, well, they've already got that, so we'll teach them this. Uh, but, but no one can really back that assumption up any longer. Well, if they're going to be fair about it, then, then you need to... You Buddhism and, and Baha'i and, uh, you know, everything. You know, we need to go, we need to make this fair and equitable, don't we? You would think, think so. No, we're, we're focusing on Islam. Funny that they would select that one particular faith. Yeah, and <laughs> then the people, useful, uh, forgive me, if you don't know any better, I guess you'll fall for anything. God help us, you know. I sound like I'm crazy some days when I call in, and I feel crazy. I'm scared to damn death. Because every day I study, and the more I learn, the more I worry about where we're headed. This is where I've come from. Whether or not people like it or not, at least get up off your ass and learn something. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you much for the call. Uh, it, it worries me to the same extent, and, and I make no apologies. I, I got a nasty message the other day from a fellow who used to work at a local TV station and uh, just ranting and raving about my, my program, and of course he doesn't like it. And then he made some comment, well, you're just trying to, you know, to, you know, to build this into a larger audience. Duh! Well, number one, of course, that's called a part of the success of being in this business. But number two, I could make a lot more money doing public relations. I had the chance to go to work for the new governor of Maryland. I took this job and came out here instead. Because I believe in it. And, you know, I'm at an age now where I've got to look around and wonder what I'm going to leave my family. And it ain't going to be much when it comes to monetary, monetary value. But on the other hand, I do hope that I leave them something in the, in the nature of standing up for what I believe in. And that they can carry that along. Because ultimately, you know, I can leave them, you know, tens of thousands of dollars or a couple of... $100,000, and, and, and they could spend that all at once and have a really good time. But just maybe, perhaps, they'll start thinking about these things, too, and how we can put the brakes on this insanity. 46, Bill Colley with you, our top story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, News Radio 1310.com. Randy Staples from Idaho Weekly Briefing, scheduled to join us in just a few minutes. Hope you can stick around.